Okay, so before we hop into Mari, let's create a little tileable texture. Let's do a uh, Try to find something neutral. I just like to go around the corner. That should be good. Um, copy that. You. Let's uh, get rid of this little spot since it might repeat too much. Let's see, I like to use this patch tool. Oh, yeah, it helps if you use a um, tablet. All right, so let's. Uh, all right, so I think it's filter. Offsets. Uh, we'll do half. Uh, I think I did 10, 24, so that's 5, 12, and 5, 12. Okay, now I'll do the same thing with the patch tool. Let's just do this since I don't have my tablets connected right now. It's good. And. There we go. Uh, you can still see some difference. Let's keep blending it a little bit more. Um, all right. Um, Got you don't want to affect the sides since they'll texture tile touch each other. So if we do that again, it should be fine. Yep. Uh, I mean we see a little seam here, so let's fix that. Let's try that again. I'll set and there, that's your tile. Save as. Save. Okay. All right, we're Mari, and let's import the file. File. All right, um, looks good. It's an OBJ, it worked. All right, we're Mari. Let's import our images, our textures. All right, so to import, right click, import to layer stack. There's one UV space, so let's make sure in name files, not sequence. Let's see, which one was it? I believe it was this one. That's why we need more files. Okay. Hey, all right, that's what we want. Uh, we can turn off the material mode. So it's a little bit too fun. Uh, maybe it's fine. So Mario's just like Photoshop, nothing too crazy. Now let's import the tile texture. All right, so click on add procedural layer, procedural pattern tiled. Click on this button next to the tile image. Let's find our tile full texture. All right. 
So we gotta expand this a little bit. All right, so from here, we're going to increase the amount of times the textures uh, tile. Let's see what happens. So we go with 10. That looks like a tiling it could be better, but it's not too terrible. We just want something like to fill in the space. Uh, let's try five. That's a little, little bit less obvious. We got to move some of these big spots. Let's uh, put it below our scan. Huh. Looks like the uh, alpha didn't go through. So let me fix this. All right, so we're going to Get rid of this black color. We're going to select just this. Luckily, Photoshop has a new tool. It's called the Object Select Tool. Just draw a square around it. Boom. All right. So just grab a mask. And we'll save it. Let's do the same with our displacements. Good. So now we're going to try to match the tiling with the skin here. Let's try six. Got to look at the pores and see if it kind of matches. Let's try seven. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, 7.5. That's pretty good. So to clean this up, I'm going to show you guys my special tool. Let's go to our layers first. And let's get rid of these extra. So I'm going to copy Control C and Control V and merge those layers to make this tool work. You don't need these, by the way, but give them a we'll keep them as backup. And again, use the tablet. So it says this brush is called the toe brush. And we're going to switch the heel selection instead of clone selection, so heel. So we're going to go around and select each spot we want to fix drag it and then move the camera which will bake from our paint buffer into our mesh yep just do that go all the way around some parts like this you might have to use the clone brush clone stamp so just, uh, luckily the shortcuts right here so radius is r drag left mouse click drag pick a source with control click and now just paint it easy as that and move your camera and it will bake in with it bake in to the texture let's see so we'll keep this hair for now but we'll clean up the texture later that way we know where the hair <laughs> All right, so we'll keep the eyebrows because it actually gives us nice um, shadowing. We'll clean up the eyelashes, do the ears too, and this hair. And if you need to, you can go to the UV space. 
and work here if you want to, which might be faster for you. It's up to you. You can actually just do this in Photoshop also with the patch tool that I've shown before. I actually used to, used to do this all the time back when I worked on the worked on 3D scans for the Marvel movies. We would project the images back on by using the scan data onto the models that were created. So you just go around and do stuff like that, fix things up. No big deal. Easy peasy. You have to do it based on your artistic ability, I suppose. Just uh, been like at least a day or maybe even half a day doing this. Want to, want to look pretty neat and nice. And then you repeat the same thing for the displacement map. And you can actually make a new channel for that. The channel is kind of like a, um, how do I explain, um, a whole nother set of layers. Uh, just keep everything default, it doesn't matter. Probably name the displacement or something. So let's import. Displacement albedo. So again, we're going to create a tileable texture. So I wish I could work on both at the same time, but when we uh, do stuff, you only get like the three RGB channels and an alpha sometimes. So unless uh, I can figure that out or someone has a solution, then that'd be awesome. <laughs> let's, uh, let's patch this up. Okay. Offset this. Okay, let's see. We try to blend it really well, so just keep going at it. Just like the other one. Sometimes you can see stuff in different layers. So right now you're seeing the differences within each of the channels. Um, yeah. Let's just save this for now. PNG. I like PNGs. They're um I kind of grew up with them, you know. Uh, back in MS Paint, you know. Um all right, so right click procedural pattern tiled import. Let's get that in. Um, yeah, it's uh, lossless, it's nice. It's got an awful channel sometimes. I know Unreal likes it, uh, but sometimes it uh, doesn't have its alpha for some reason, which is when target is coming handy. Let's make this as above tile. All right, 
not bad. Copy, paste, right click, merge layers. And you just repeat the same process. So it's toe brush and heel selection. Grab a spot with your tablet. Uh, I got a mouse and just do that everywhere. Clean up that spot, all that stuff. Yeah. And I'll show you what the re end result is. All right, so once you're done, you get something like this. A little bit nice and clean. This is, doesn't have to be super perfect. We're going to be using this to create the displacement map in ZBrush. Give us some nice free um, skin bump and all that. Um, what you can also do is view the different channels. So try to make sure it all blends not too terribly. R, G, G one looks pretty good. And B, this one's like a high frequency layer. Let's go to our diffuse. Uh, right down here, you can check out different layers and just make it look all nice. Clean up the hair too, if you want. This is covered up by our X gen hair, so it doesn't matter too much, but if you want your textures a little bit cleaner, you can go ahead and kind of heal brush those out too. It really just depends on what you're going for. I ain't really worried too much about back here, but that's what we get. So, see you in the next lesson.